Okay, so hi, I'm Tommaso Cavallari, and this is our work. So it's on the fly adaptation of regression forests for online camera relocalization. So, what is the relocalization problem? You have uh, a sensor observing a scene, and the system already knows something about the, about the scene. Uh, for example, it could be a dense 3D surface map. So this sensor is viewing the scene, but we have no idea from where. Now, relocalization just means that the observation and scene data are used to determine the sensor's pose. Uh, here is our contribution. So, there are basically two families of relocalizers. One is based on matching images, or keyframes. Um, these methods are generally very fast, but not uh, extremely robust. The other family is based on uh, establishing image to scene correspondences, and then computing the pose of the camera geometrically. These methods are more robust, but not as fast as the first methods. So, recently though, there was a new subfamily of correspondence-based methods that appeared, and these subfamilies, this subfamily is called the uh, scene coordinate regression forest, or SCORE forests for short. So th these new methods are both fast to evaluate and robust, but they have a problem. So unlike the other methods, they require an expensive offline preprocessing. In practice, this prevents us from using them in online systems. Our contribution is a change to the SCORE pipeline, which makes us fast and robust with no preprocessing requirements. And so, unlike existing SCORE-based methods, our approach is suitable for practical and real-time systems. So at first, I'm going to qu quickly explain how correspondence-based relocalizers work. You have your input image data, and you, have a and you have a 3D scene. The first task is establishing a set of image-to-scene correspondences. So that's the hard part. In fact, in a way, you could say that's the only part, because once you have those correspondences, the rest of the camera pose estimation steps are mechanical. You feed the step to the, the correspondence set to a RANSAC variant. In uh, our case, we use the preemptive RANSAC. And uh, out comes your pose. So let's look now at how SCORE establishes those correspondences. You have some input data. Uh, we use an RGBD image pair in this case. And there is some scene that the image data was acquired from. The main component of a score pipeline is a scene coordinate regressor. So look at it as a black box for now. And uh, here, so here's how you can estimate the scene coordinate corresponding to a point uh, in the input images. First, you compute a feature vector from the appearance of the image around that point. And then you feed that feature vector to the scene coordinate regressor. Out comes your 3D scene coordinate, which corresponds to the point in the input image. Actually, this is also a simple version because recent methods, new approaches, uh, provide a distribution of scene coordinates corresponding to the image point. And we can do this for any location in the image. So this black box, the scene coordinate regressor, gives us the image to scene correspondences that we need to compute the pose. And in a way, implementing that uh, black box amounts to solving a machine learning problem. And in the case of score forests, as you might guess from the name and from my mistake, the, we train a random forest. So let's quickly go over the training process. First, you have to collect ground truth image to scene correspondences. And they might come, for instance, from, a image, from an image sequence captured along a known camera trajectory. Now, this becomes our training set. And uh, we, have to create a we have to create a decision tree. And we do that by recursively splitting the training set into smaller subsets with lower spatial variance. In practice, we are learning how to spatially cluster the scene coordinates associated with our image training features. This basically means that features corresponding to locations observed from many viewpoints end up in the same leaves of the forest. When everything is nicely clustered, according to some termination criteria, we are done. So this was a simple example, but should give an idea of how to train a tree. And again, how to, to train a forest, you repeat this process for uh, each tree. So this gives you a scene coordinate regression forest, which means that now you have a functioning scene coordinate regressor. And so, as I said before, uh, the rest of the pose uh, estimation tasks, so the rest of the relocalization task, becomes mechanical. And we have solved the problem. But there is one more problem. So remember what the input to the forest training process was. 
we had pairs of features associated to 3D locations in a scene, a very specific scene. So, for this reason, the trained, the trained forest is scene specific. Now, if we want to apply the same algorithm on a different scene, we have to train a new forest from scratch. And this means that we have to run the entire training pipeline again, and this produces a completely different forest specific to that new scene. So, if we want to run a score-based relocalizer on a new scene, then we need to have access, first have access to that scene in advance of deployment. Then we need to capture enough training data to train the forest, and then we have to train the forest. This is a process that could take several hours. And all of this, all of this just to end up with a relocalizer that only works in that specific scene. So this is unfortunate. Now, the question becomes, is there anything, anything at all that we can do? The answer is, yes, there is. So think about the forest as if it was split into two logical components. We have its internal structure in white and the actual leaf models that are, that are colored in blue now. Together, they allow us to establish the image to scene correspondences that we need. Now, the contents of each internal node look like this. These are, these are simple split functions that uh, split the examples depending on some values of their corresponding features. And these split functions allow us to determine to which leaf a particular feature vector will be routed. Now, as for the leaf nodes, they store 3D scene coordinate data, specifically mixtures of 3D Gaussians as, that allow us to model the spatial distribution of points. And this is clearly dependent on the training scene. But here is the insight. What we call internal structure, the routing parameters in the internal nodes, that is quite scene independent, and almost all of the training time is spent learning these numbers. Learning the leaf models can actually be done online, and this is the process that we call adaptation. And here is how the adaptation is done. You begin with a score forest that has been trained offline on, a, any, any, on any scene, as we described. Now, we take all of the data stored in the leaves, and we simply throw it away. Now the leaves have become empty, but the forest has otherwise remained identical. Of course, this is no longer suitable for relocalization since there is no leaf data. We can adapt, though, this forest on a new scene on the fly by repopulating the leaves with examples from a successfully tracked sequence. And we do this simply by feeding the, the examples into the forest and aggregating their scene coordinate data in the leaves. These examples may come, for instance, from uh, a SLAM system running on the new scene. And because of how quickly the forests can be adapted and then evaluated, the method can be used in practice in live SLAM systems. And this is what the aggregation of coordinate data in the leaves looks like. So in this animation, you can see examples that have been routed to certain leaves that have, are being grouped into modal clusters in yellow. These are the same clusters that will later be used to estimate the camera, the, to estimate the camera pose. So to recap quickly, in our adapted relocalization forest, the internal structure is kept the same as in the pre-trained forest, but the leaf data, those model clusters that actually allow us to perform the relocalization, those, um, have been replaced with model clusters coming from the new scene. This allows us to relocalize the sensor in that scene in real time. So th that was how it works, but how well does it work? And uh, to start, we compare against one of the fast keyframe best approaches that, we that I mentioned at the beginning. In specifically, this is the random ferns approach that implemented in the, SLAM, in the SLAM pipeline that we use. So this approach works well when a human is in the loop and can move the camera in search of known poses. But, uh, but as I said earlier, image matching approaches aren't very robust. Specifically, they suffer on poses that are very different from those that were, uh, the, the system was, had seen during training. So if we are, were to force the relocalization in every frame, we get results like the ones on the left versus our results on the right. In theory, you should, the results should match the images in the center. Now, ferns, the random ferns method is computationally cheaper, as you can see here. here. But there are two different types of, spe of speed that we are interested in. We have the cost of training the relocalizer, which in our case amounts to adapting the forest. And in this case, we are 10 times slower than ferns, but still well under the real-time th threshold, which is what we are really interested in. Now, we also have the cost of evaluating the relocalizer. We are slower there as well, 
but we provide much more reliable camera poses, as you have seen in the video. And uh, since the relocalizers in uh, SLAM systems are typically invoked only f after tracking failures, we believe that this extra time is well spent. So let's quantify this difference in robustness. On the horizontal axis, we have the pose novelty. So the further the ride, the more novel the pose. And on the vertical axis, we have the accuracy. So the percentage of test frames relocalized correctly. As I said, a weakness of keyframe-based method is that their performance follows, falls off with pose novelty. And we see that here. We, indeed, we expect to do better. And as you can see, we do better, indeed. So to recap, our evaluation takes more time, but we provide a much more accurate result. And as I said before, the adaptation still runs in real time. So how does our method compare in accuracy to the original score method, which were, which were trained offline? In this table, we see the percentages of test frames relocalized correctly by existing score methods on the 7 data dataset, which is the standard one. Uh, each of the offline methods were trained offline for each scene. So we've lost all of the training data. But as you can see, we haven't lost much in the accuracy of the system. Actually, in many sequences, we do better, except on one, the difficult stairs sequence. So regarding that sequence, though, as after the submission, we ran more experiments on our system. We tried more parameters. And as you can see, it, uh, basically, we got much better results just by tuning the parameters. So in conclusion. We proposed a simple but effective modification to the convolutional score forest training, which yields a relocalizer that tailors itself to new scenes on the fly, is powerful, being able to relocalize from a variety of novel poses, is fast, allowing its integration with real-time systems, and last but not least, is available right now. The source code, is a, source code is available on GitHub, ready to be integrated into your system. So you can visit our project page for uh, details. Thank you very much. This is the, we have a video for the localizer of work.